Three, two, one. <laughs> Three, two, one. Action. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're live now? Yes. Of course we are. Of course <laughs> we are. <laughs> How is everybody today? I hope you're having a great Saturday. The weather here is uh, changeable. Let's call it that. Uh, this morning it was cloudy and foggy and dull and gray and now the sun is trying to come out and it should be a lovely afternoon. It's going to be a fun one for us because we're going to sit here and play in paint and stamps and stencils and a whole bunch of other fun stuff today because I can't wait. I've been really wanting to play and I haven't had time lately. So um, we're going to be doing this piece called Mixed Media Monarchs. Um, they are mi migrating right now. Um, I've only seen a few this summer. And then suddenly this past week, we've had dozens. I've seen them all over the place, which it kind of surprised me being so late in the season. But uh, they are starting their migration at this time of year. So uh, I thought it would be fun. And what is better than butterflies? Butterflies are just pretty and they're fun to paint. So we're going to be working with uh, a lot of paper and some stamps and some stencils. And uh, I, I used just a small tag, nothing over the top. This one is a four and a half by 10, not a big one. And uh, a conglomeration of stamps and stencils that I always have around to play with. And we're gonna create something really pretty and quite dimensional with these butterflies. But paper sculpting. Paper sculpting, yeah. Well, kind of, more like paper bending in this case. You're sculpting. Oh, whatever. So <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have some great giveaways today. I got a lovely big box of Tombow products yesterday. So our giveaways today are uh, some beautiful little drawing sets from Tombow, a gorgeous pencil set and some other goodies that are thrown into that great little create pouch for you from both from us from Tombow and uh, I think you're gonna really like them I love Tombow products I've got a new one that I'm going to show you today because it's so cool I finally got some they have been in huge demand every time I've ordered some they have been out of stock or out of inventory so I, I finally got some so I'm really excited about that. So I'm anxious to show you guys that new tool from Tombow. Um, we're loaded up now on uh, black erasers. We're loaded up on um, the knock erasers and the mechanical pencils and the drawing pens. Finally got them all in. So it, what can you do? It's a great product. And so it sells out really quick. So <laughs> I'm, I'm always happy when I get my Tombow shipment because there's always good stuff in it. And they're always very generous. So yeah, we have some really nice drawing sets for the giveaway today, plus a few other little goodies that are thrown in. So that is our giveaway this week. Um, I do have a little bit of a shout out, a little bit. Um, I have, I, I'm always looking for something fun to play with, something interesting to play with. And um, I spend a lot of time uh, searching the net looking for reasonable supplies I find these days is looking more for not necessarily for a bargain but looking for great quality that you're not going to pay through the nose for and um, and then I look for reasonable shipping uh, shipping is what shipping is it costs that's just the short and the long of it shipping costs um, so of what I look for is the value of that shipping. Am I going to get it in 14 days and it costs me $900? Or am I going to get it in two weeks and it costs me 25? And, or can I get it for minimal shipping or do they have a coupon for free shipping? So I look for things like that when I'm shopping. And I gotta tell you, one of the best places that I have found for art supplies, um, particularly in the US where the shipping is reasonable, um, and it arrives within a timely fashion and you can get great deals um, is Jackson Art. If you have not shopped with them, you're going to love them. Uh, they're based in the UK. I have ordered supplies from them on many, many, many occasions. The prices are always reasonable. The quality is always excellent and their shipping costs are 
moderate. They're affordable. They're reasonable, even considering that they're coming from the UK. So if you are looking for something specific for fine arts, whether it's colored pencils, watercolors, whatever it is, go and check out Jackson Arts. I don't think you're going to be disappointed because I certainly never have been. Um, I get my Derwent pencils from them. <laughs> they're fabulous and their service is top notch. So go and check them out. That's jacksonart.com. You're going to love it. So that is that that's my commercial for today. That's it. That's as big as it gets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I am a fan of Jackson art. Uh, I get a lot of supplies from well, them. I mean, your but European then, viewers are going to be happy that they have a that they have an out. Jackson art is bar none. I mean, I deal with them quite frequently. I, I get my Derwent colored pencils through them. I've ordered my watercolor through them. Um, Sheila Landry is familiar with Jackson art because her and I have spent, you know, a great many times commiserating and you know enabling each other on that website <laughs> let's call it that so um we're gonna have a little bit of fun today i wanted to do something mixed media because it's it just you know we haven't done a lot of it lately i wanted to kind of step back from traditional decorative painting i wanted to play and do something a little more relaxed which this is it's very relaxed there's no real wrong way to do this, honestly. And uh, the pattern is complete. So if you're looking for any specialized papers, you don't really need them. I've done a color sheet for you. Uh, my only recommendation about that color sheet with the uh, embellishments is have it printed on cardstock and laser if possible. Um, I printed mine on a laser and I printed one on an inkjet and they're both gorgeous. And I took my inkjet version once it was completely dry and I just sprayed it with a little fixative before I used it. But both work just fine. <laughs> so uh, I like that sheet full of just odds and sods because then you can make it your own. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. I just chose things that fell into the theme. So that is what we're going to do today. you got to show them the new tool, the, the new funky thing from Tombow. Oh, yeah. This is so cool. I just, this thing like rocked my world. It's I like, a pen. It's a pen. <laughs> with, I know. With glue. <laughs> it's a glue pen. <laughs> this thing is the bee's knees. I just had way too much fun with this. Uh, and you don't have to do anything spectacular with it, which there's no squeezing involved, no nothing. Just write. And it literally writes with ink, just much like it would with, or writes with glue as if it was ink so it goes on really cute it does not uh clog which i thought was really cool hmm. and it's got a nice tight fitting cap that literally <laughs> cleans the tip oh nice it's yeah i thought this thing was so cool and then uh, of course i had to play with it so uh, what am i going to do with glue but i have to glue something to it right so glitter <laughs> Yeah. So I glued it with glitter. It's awesome. So I'm going to show you how to use this. It's just a phenomenal little tool. You're going to love these. Um, I just thought it was such a clever tool. And Tombow is so good about making quality writing implements that I, I didn't doubt that this was going to work. But I was pleasantly surprised at how well it works. So Tombow glue pen. Awesome little rig. I love this. So I'll show you how to use this in a little bit because it's... This is an awesome little tool. And I can see it being used for a whole bunch of things. <laughs> Especially with me. I'm going to be gluing stuff to everything now. <laughs> so, um, I know we've got a ton of people in here today. and uh, But I <laughs> well, cannot then, see the chat. There we go. No soup pots. It will not be used in my beard. No. It is not washable. <laughs> no. It's, you know... Kathy, this was, I thought that this was just a brilliant idea, um, tight control. So I, I took it to my piece and I used it for doing some decorative scrolls and then sprinkled them with glitter and, oh my, yes, I can see a great many things being glitterified Here. with this. Is this a one-time use or is it refillable? Uh, it's a one-time use, um, but they're uh, surprisingly... Um, the quality is excellent, but surprisingly, they're uh, uh, they last quite a while. Because I 
I played with this all morning just on everything I could think of and works on paper cardboard cardboard I worked it on painted surface and it worked just fine so um I'm re I'm impressed and I can't wait to see what else I do with it because it's just like a fun little tool how many of those you get um there's a bunch of them in the drawer there I think we've got a couple of dozen in stock I, I got everything I could so but yes, Tombow. I love my Tombow stuff. Um, I'm in. I'm in love with my drawing pens. Those are, I think are my favorite. I love my drawing. Where do pens. we get the pen? TracyMuro.net. Yeah, we have them on the website. When did you add those? Yesterday. We just got them yesterday. Oh well. Yeah, and then I I played with mine all day because <laughs> <laughs> I was like a kid with a new toy. <laughs> it's like what what else can I draw? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to tackle um, this mixed media monarchs. I, I just think that this is a pretty piece. You could use it as just for inspiration sitting on your desk or it could be used as an ornament. Hang in a window or in your kitchen. Just something to... I could see this with psalms or prayers attached to it or... There's so many things you could do with this. It's just so pretty. So we're going to have a little bit of fun so if you guys are ready to get started it needs a paw print on it and just one <laughs> saying be a good human be a good human good one there yeah be a good human <laughs> so if you guys are ready to get started so am i there's my design input <laughs> that's your design <laughs> input okay good here we go <laughs> so our mixed media monarchs i just think that this is refreshing it's fun um i chose daisies because i always tend to go to daisies because i like them they're simple flower they're not complex i think that's one of the reasons that i, I like working with them so much they're not complex and for this particular design they didn't need to be um i used a little bit of cardstock we're going to stabilize the cardstock for this with uh, a little bit of matte medium or decoupage medium we're going to work with uh, fluid acrylics, but in the pattern, I've also given you substitution colors. If you don't have the fluid acrylics, you can always use uh, the Americana colors for this. So I just realized that I've got a couple of things missing from my table, and one of which is my stencil, <laughs> brocade stencil, yeah. which is, uh, it's this elegant design that's back here, and it's M279. Right behind you, honey. Yeah. One, two, That's the stencil that we're using. Um, and then we have the sheet full of, of uh, quotes that I gave you. You're going to cut those out. Um, I chose the word hero for this one. I love the little definition down here. I just think those are quite pretty. And then I chose this one with the big monarch butterfly. So we're going to use those two in mine. I've got a selection of stamps. I have my grunge set, of course, because I love my grunge set, and my vintage note stamp. And then, of course, I have to have some cancellation stamps. These are also from the grunge set. And then I went digging around till I found a couple of little butterfly stamps. I didn't want anything too big. Um, you can always use the one from uh, Stampendous, or you can find these little Little butterfly sets are available almost anywhere. Um, there's some gorgeous ones in the Tim Holtz line. These ones are actually from our local dollar store. These little butterflies here. They're just a simple butterfly. I didn't want anything too extravagant or too busy. Yep. There's your partner in crime. Woohoo! Which one? Uh, one of the three. <laughs> Is it the one that has to have coffee? <laughs> No. No. Okay. I don't know if Sandy's a coffee drinker. Or requires it. Does she require coffee? Sandy is a Diet Coke girl. And if she has coffee, it's usually an espresso. Choo. That's why we have to pat her down to find the key every once in a while. Ah. Because so, <laughs> she's busy. So, um, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. I'm going to start with the edge of this piece. I, in this case, I used a chip paint technique going around the outside edge, which was done with a rigger or a small round and some black paint. And I just roll the brush along 
just to create this sort of broken edge. But I'm going to show you another way to do it. So I've got my stays on stamp pad because I love my stays on. And I'm going to create sort of a broken edge along the edge just by rubbing it with the stamp pad like this. <laughs> Deb's here too. She has coffee. She has coffee. Yep. Right. So just a simple broken edge, nothing too elaborate. You don't need to go overboard. Now, the one that I'm using is actually a dark brown. I think it's called Walnut uh, from Stays On, but you can use black. I just chose this one because it's dark. And my black stamp pad is in need of refilling. So I've got a nifty little border all the way around. Kind of gives you that broken paint look. I'm going to dry this real quick. I keep losing the chat window. Oh, there it is. There, you know. Suzanne says she found some really nice stamps at Dollar Tree. Our local dollar store has really nice ones too. They get that, which is where I got this set. Uh, our local Dollarama or Great Canadian Craft Store. Oh, that's a nice comment. What's that? Uh, from helpful one one two, love these tutorial. Tracy's instructions are so easy to follow. Thank that's, you. That's nice. Good to know. They have to be easy because I can't keep up with them. <laughs> so, we're going to add some stamps to this. I always use my grunge set. Um, I got to tell you something about my grunge set. These I only have I think a dozen of these left, and that's it. They're all gone. Um, they are no longer uh, being manufactured. So um, if you were looking for my set of grunge stamps there, we only have a few left on the website. And the same with the vintage note stamp, we are down to the very last bit of that inventory. So, and we will not be able to get any more. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use a combination of these. I like mixing it up. I'm going to, little bit of ink on my vintage note. I love this stamp and I want a little bit of text. I like it darker in some places, lighter in others. Just like that. I don't want a ton of it, but a little bit. Just like that. So I think that's good. And then I've got this one. I like this one too. I'm gonna use that. Just a little. I think it's the change with that vertical line that's in there that appeals to me. And it, of course, I don't want it solid. And then I like this signature block because it has texture and it has a different type of handwriting that appeals as well. I can put that up there. It's sort of just hither, thither, wherever you want to put it. And then this one is really cool. This is that crackle. <laughs> I like that. What are you chuckling about? Uh, apparently Deb Bloomfield resembles the girl from The Exorcists without coffee. Okay, there's a visual. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So my membership group has started posting their uh, challenge pieces. Oh yeah. And uh, already? Already? Well, yeah. Well, today's the last day. They gotta have them all in today. Oh right? yeah. So. Um, when are you spinning the wheel for that one? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep. So they gotta get them all in today. But they're flipping amazing. Absolutely amazing. Ooh, I like that. That one's pretty. And then I'm going to put a little bit of that here because, you know, I like that. Ooh. And then I got to have my cancellation stamps. I have this obsession with cancellation stamps. So I'm going to put, let's put them there. Ooh, I like these ones. These are from the dollar store set. 
There's some in my grunge set too, but these ones are from the dollar store. Oh, I like those. Those are fun. And then I've got this cute little butterfly. I think this one might be too small, but let's do this little guy here. Oh, pretty. Just think, because butterflies are the theme for this one, you need to have a butterfly somewhere in that background. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. <laughs> it's when you're smirking and giggling, I wonder. Uh, you're talking about, uh, I need idiot strings for my grunge, sh grunge set pieces. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I am just... There's a reason why I keep that basket right there, because if I don't, I lose them. I don't know where they go. And she starts going into store stock. And then I end up going <laughs> and getting another set because I can't find my grunge set. So I have at least three or four grunge sets on the go at any one time. I could ink every... Look at this. Seriously. <laughs> You're surprised? No, I just... Without even trying, you know? That's what amazes me. Look, got ink everywhere. Good gravy. So, now that I have... I've got some fun stuff on there. I really like this. I think this one's a little darker than the first one, but that's okay. I just got a little excited with the stamps, that's all. I think... I like the texture. It kind of sets a theme for this. So I'm going to make sure it's good and dry. And then I've got my pieces that I cut out of my sheet. And I'm going to use my stamp pad to age the edges of that paper a little bit. If you've got those little blenders, you know, those Tim Holtz blenders, you can use those. But I can never find mine, so... I'm going to age the edges of that and I'm going to do the same thing to my my little quote here. I really like it if it doesn't look so new and I like it if it looks a little oh I like that look at that I accidentally made it look even more distressed <laughs> I got glue I got ink everywhere I can take it to the garage and burn it for a second fine <laughs> does it need counseling no it's no. not as traumatized as i am okay <laughs> so i had to remember to go get my my decoupage and then i have to find my map medium you can barely hear you i know there i had to leave i'm i forgot to get my map medium in my decoupage. Both of these are fabulous for this. Um, I'm a big fan of the matte medium. I'm also a big fan of the decoupage. And I kind of decide when I'm working which one's going to work. I used both of these for this one because I wanted to stabilize these butterflies and I needed something that was going to get a little stiffer. So I went to the decoupage for that. And for the actual adhering of some of these paper pieces I use this map medium so I'm going to keep my cancellation stamps handy because I might do something so we need to add a stencil to this did you I hand? didn't do anything <laughs> could you reach behind you and get my M279 brocade Thank you. <laughs> so this is the stencil we're working with, the one that I neglected to get out of my bin. So I love this stencil. That's the one we're going to work with. This one is just elegant, which is why I chose it for this. So we're going to start adding some color to this. And the colors that I'm using are the cobalt teal hue, which is this brilliant blue. 
in the fluid acrylic and we're using a little bit of green gold and a little cobalt blue which is a darker blue and a quinacridone magenta which is that deep brilliant magenta and some diarilli yellow which is my favorite yellow if I can get it out of the bottle you need an in-your-face yellow for this and I need a little diox purple <laughs> It's because she has connections, Robin. What's that? She has a, what? I've never seen a bottle that big for media line. <laughs> they, remember when they had the uh, <laughs> the fluid art paint pouring and whatnot? You could get the the media in that the BA bottle. Of course, you can get it in Bahama Blue. Yes, <laughs> I have an eight ounce of Bahama Blue too. They don't put a Spaltman in eight ounce though. They, they need to. Somebody you need, should. <laughs> you need a fifty gallon drum. <laughs> I need a fifty gallon drum. <laughs> <laughs> Figures. <laughs> so I've got a little pish pish. A little spray bomb. I love these things. This simplifies a lot of things. I'm just going to lightly mist my surface. Because we're going to create sort of a really watercolory. That's not really a word, is it? Watercolory. 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 Colory? I'm going to start with a little bit of um, cobalt blue, which is this deep blue, and I'm just going to pick up a little. I've thinned it with a little bit of water, but because the surface is wet. I can manipulate it. I can move it around. And then I'm going to pick up a little of that cobalt teal, which is that brighter blue. Look at this. Well, that's the third time it's been asked now. What's that? So I have to address it. What? Are you doing any Halloween projects? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get through the month of October without doing a skull. So, so yes. you, you, you got a skull coming. I do have a skull coming. Any other Halloween projects? Um, I'm working on a, yes, witches. <laughs> Another witch. Witches, three witch of them. Three of them? Yeah. Ooh. We're going to have Are they one. known as Sandy, Deb, and Tracy? No. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm kidding. Be nice. I'm kidding. <laughs> that, was, that was mean. Sorry, Deb. Sorry, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to the idiot behind the curtain. <laughs> so I used a little bit of that green gold and then diarolite yellow. I like this type of background. I use this a lot. The only thing that really changes is how bright the colors get. Um, I'm a fan of this bright yellow. It's just diarylite yellow. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of that magenta in yellow. And I'm going to make a nice hot orange down here. Look at that. And then magenta in here. I love this. Look at this. So my colors are a little intense. And then before I hit that blue, I'm going to throw in a little diox. Look at this. So you can continue to add colors to this until you get exactly what you want. But I'm going to show you something really fun. I'm going to pull a little more of that cobalt in there because this wasn't quite what I wanted not quite okay so I've got all of these colors but now I got sort of this blotchy thing in the middle so I'm going to take my little spritzer 
and I'm going to diffuse these colors just a little. And if I move it like that, it just sort of brings all of these colors into the center a little bit. And it softens all the boundaries between those colors. So we get these really nice, soft, watery look. Take it a lot. So now I'm going to dry this. I like this little dryer because it does not move things around too much. A little bit, but not too too much. But I like that softening that that little bit of water gives. Let some of these colors run together and diffuse. And then I'm going to dry it. I'm gonna rinse my brush here. I'm gonna push some of this color around a little. There we go. Trying to get some greens out of that? Or? Well, just trying to move it around a bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, but... I love these colors. So those little spritzers come in handy whenever... Maybe boundaries just a little... Looked a little too hard-edged and not as soft as you wanted them. And you can just spritz the wet paint and it softens the look. So this is almost dry. And then we can add more color to this if we choose to. We can add drips, we can add drops. So if you're one of those people that really likes more intense color, don't be afraid to put some more on. It's just paint. Go, oh, Supots! What did she do? I can't see it. Hey, $55 donation. Aw, thank you. While she's dying, drying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> While she's drying that, let's get the fund over 4400 for the puppers. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Sue. So I'm just adding a little bit more color because I can just to intensify it in a few little places. Nothing much. <laughs> my puppy is removing my socks. <laughs> That's what puppies do. Yep. There we go. I was not seeing enough orange. I wanted more orange. So orange it is. Look at that. I love that I can add color, remove color, strengthen colors, water them down, soften them with a little bit. Now we're cooking with gas. I am loving this. Lots of yummy color. Now, if you're looking for any of these fluid acrylics, go and check out Sandy McTeer's website. Sandy stocks the fluid acrylic. So she's a great source for these. So, oh, I think I'm happy now. Look at that. We got lots of yummy color. I got it. Not quite dry. So you can putz with this all you want. So if you like the brighter color, if you want it a little more dialed back and a little softer, you can certainly do that without any issues at all. It should change automatically, but I don't know why it hasn't. What's that? Uh, the, the fund. supposed to change with your donations. 
and it didn't move. And it hasn't moved. So, once you've got all your color on and you're happy with it, I like this one. It's a little, little brighter. Um, the one thing I think I want to do is I want to soften this a little bit. I want this subdued a little bit. Not, I like the brighter color, but I'm finding the piece itself is just a little dark. So I'm going to take a little bit of warm white. I'm going to heavily thin this, by the way. And I'm just going to brush a light coat of heavily thinned warm white over top. That's better. Just found that some of this was a little too sharp, I think is the word I was looking for. So I'm going to mute mine just a little. I wanted these colors just a little softer. These are just, same with the stamped images, I wanted to soften them just a little bit. But I still have all of that color, so just a light wash. And look at that. So pretty. So our next step, we're going to use... Mm, the next step we're going to use is our stencil. I like this brocade stencil. I think it's elegant. And it works really well for this piece in particular. Um, I'm going to tape mine in place. Now, where you position it is entirely up to you. I could come a little further in out. I think I'm going to. Here we are. And I'm going to tape that in place. And we're going to use stencil brush and a little bit of a schfalken, which is my favorite dark brown. I love this color. And I'm not using a ton of paint for this, just a little. And I'm going to blot some of the excess onto a piece of paper towel. And I'm going to work this in a circular fashion. This color is going to be almost transparent. We don't want it fully opaque. What we want is to see the pattern, but we don't want to interfere with any of the other design elements that we've put on here, meaning we don't want to bury them. So I'm using just a light coat. Change directions frequently when you're doing this so that we get pattern, but we're not going to get a fully opaque coat. Oh, got a question from Patrick. Hi, Patrick. But first, Don Lavelle just donated twenty dollars. Thank you, Don. Uh, she says my Frenchie is in a calendar for twenty twenty four. Awesome. Awesome. So, Patrick's question: I have some media acrylics at home sent mm -hmm. by a little fairy. <laughs> but uh, would you think this kind of effect could work with distressed inks too? Add mica, etc., for example. Yes. Boom. Yes. Distress, distressed inks will do the same thing. So I'm going to blot this because mine, actually, I think my brush was wet. So it got a little bit of bleeding, but that's okay. I'll just blot it a little bit. It'll be fine. So I've got a little bit of pattern in there, which I like. And if I wanted to, I could distress this even further. I could sand it a little bit, but I think we're good. I'm going to start writing these donations down because it doesn't look like our... Oh, there it goes. It just changed. Oh, just needed some time to update. Yeah, <laughs> it's taken a while today. So now that we've got that stencil design in, we're going to put a little shadow at the edges of this. And I'm just going to put a float of Eschvaltum along the outside edge. So I loaded my brush to float, but this is not what you would call a traditional float. 
by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just putting a little bit of that asphaltum around the outside edge just to give us a nice soft oh. distressed look. Deb Bloomfield, I donated to my local shelter. They busted an Amish puppy mill. Oh, oh my goodness. 26 starved dogs and 19 cats. Wow. That's terrible. That is horrible. There we go. So that little bit of age around the outside edge just helps those colors pop a little bit. It also accentuates that light center in there. So I'm going to dry this really well. And I'm going to get my alphabet set. I wanted nice big alphabets. So I stamped a word on. <laughs> this is the dumb part of this. Tells you where my brain was. So I used the word bloom on this one. They can't one. see that. There right here. I used the word bloom. And, um, and then I stamped the word bloom onto my surface without realizing that that's where I was going to put my butterfly. So I've got the word bloom is tucked in behind my butterfly. <laughs> yeah. Some days the elevator doesn't go to the top floor. So I'm going to stamp the word hero on this piece. And I'm kind of going to think a little better. I'm thinking it's going to go <laughs> right here <laughs> this time. Uh, is Sue Potts Canadian? Yes, she is. Okay. That explains it. What? So the fund is in U.S. dollars. Ah, uh, okay. If you donate in Canadian, it will automatically convert convert to U.S. dollars. Yeah. Obviously, the U.S. dollar dollar is mightier than the Canadian dollar. <laughs> so yes, it's not going to be a hundred percent. So there is an automatic conversion there, <laughs> and on top of that, YouTube likes to dip its fingers in all your donations as well. So, it's their way of saying, we're letting you do this, but we have to take a little chunk for ourselves. Yeah, it's just their processing fee, that's all. Yeah. Which they would be paying to a credit card company anyhow, so. One way or the other, these guys got to get their cut, you know. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, it's the nature of things. Yep. So, I'm using the word hero. There's a word that's bandied around a bit much these days. But that's why we got weird scents in there too. Yeah. I know everybody's been donating, you know, solid numbers like 20 bucks, yeah. $10, but $5, $50, yeah. what have you. Because of the conversion rate, even if you're from Australia and you donate to us, that has to be converted to US dollars. Yeah. There we go. Oh, goodness, Tracy. There, the word hero. I like these alphabet stamps. Um, this one in particular, it's one of the larger ones I have, and I really like this set. Um, this one is by Recollections from the Michaels. From Michaels, um, it was actually quite reasonably priced. It's the quality is nice. Um, I can honestly say that about most of the Recollections products that the quality is nice. Thankfully, but uh, yeah, if you're looking for a good alphabet set. These ones are the half inch um, letters. I love this set. I have a lot of these. I've discovered. <laughs> I was cleaning out my stamp drawer. Uh oh. Did you find some things? I found some things. Yeah. <laughs> I found some things. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have 11 sets of alphabet stamps, all in different fonts or sizes. Tad bit obsessive. Just a little bit. And if you want to help out with what we're trying to do, but you don't want to donate, that's completely fine. Absolutely. Um, buy a bag of dog food or cat food, go to a local shelter, hand it in. Most of the local shelters um, have an Amazon 
Yeah, they have Amazon wish lists. They have Amazon <laughs> wish lists. So if they're looking for something in particular, if they're really in need of something in particular, they usually add them to their wish list. Um, our local shelter does this regularly, uh, updates their wish list daily because they their needs change. And so they uh, will request, send out a request. At least they're all different and not replicated. So, alrighty, I'm gonna dry this ink just so I don't smear it. <laughs> Paintbrush, bob, and dot. <laughs> Here we go. So, kind of like, I really liked these things. So, I'm going to use a little bit of matte medium. And my mini fugly brush. Love my fugly brushes. I was on the brush guys the other day and um, he's got fugly brushes back in. They don't stay in long, the fugly brush. So I've got some matte medium on the surface. I'm going to spritz my paper back in front with a little bit of water and I'm going to lay that reasonably straight anyway maybe you ever have a day there so I just press that in and then I'm going to use a little bit of matte medium right over top of it just to stick it down like so so hopefully next week or actually yeah this week coming up mm -hmm. um i'm going to be talking to the direct former director of the local spca okay and i am going to see whether it's better to just give him one lump sum yep check kind of thing mm-hmm or if they would benefit more if we just did a huge shopping spree. Yep. Either way. Because here our shelters are government controlled. Yeah. And they're in a bad way right now. So they're government controlled, which means if one receives a donation, but somebody else needs the money elsewhere. Yeah, it goes it, elsewhere. It goes elsewhere. So. Uh, we have two within driving distance. Well, three, four, five. Yeah. Within. Uh, yep. No, we can. Uh, comfortable driving distance. Yep. We have about three. Yep. And I'm going to talk to former director and see which is best for the shelters yep. locally. So if we go on a huge shopping spree, you're going to see. A lot. A <laughs> lot of toys, a lot of beds. Yeah. Food. Food. Pro probably a bunch of bags of food. Yeah. So, so I just adhered both my butterfly piece. I like this one. It has a cancellation stamp on it. Go figure. And then I uh, covered both with a nice generous coat of that matte medium. I like this design element. One of the things that I did find the other day, because I was tidying up, and one of the things that I found the other day was uh, a whole bunch of little odds and sods and whatnot for mixed media, and I'm a fan, so I have a lot of mixed media stuff. So I'm going to dry that really well. And then we are ready to transfer our line drawing on. That's a good idea. What's that? We could find the veterinary office that helps them and set up a fund for them there. Yeah. Not bad. That's a... I didn't even think of that. Mm -hmm. Go to a local veterinary center and tell them that, yeah, okay. Our local... This is for spays and neuters for... <laughs> Until you run out. Until you run out. Yep. <laughs> so I've got my Flutterby on there. I chose this one 
well, actually, all of the ones that I chose have a butterfly on them of some sort. It doesn't have to necessarily have to be a monarch. The reason I put some different colors in is so that you can customize this to suit you. You don't have to do it. Good to find. A thousand stars from Sandy Jackson. I didn't see that at it all popped here. Up, just popped up on Facebook. Sandy, thank you so much. Those stars are going to go a long way to helping the puppers. Yeah. That's going to get added on top because yep. this goal thing doesn't include stars. There, now I get the notification. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> way ahead of you. <laughs> it's a first. So the line drawing for this one is super simple. I just went with a very basic daisy. And you can pick and choose where you put this, how high you want it. Um, if you decide you want it on the other side, just make a copy and flip it over. You can do this any way you want. <gasps> Pardon me. Good heavens. So we're going to tape this into place. And You're then getting a lot of bless yous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, which microphone's mine? That one. Just looking for my graphite paper here. There we go. So, I got a nice piece, brand new piece of graphite. I'm going to put that under there. Now, I chose daisies for a very specific reason. It's because they're they're quick to trace. And if they're not absolutely perfect, it's okay. So, daisies. I like using my red gel to trace this because I can see where I've been. I get talking or doing something else and I forget where I've been and then I miss parts. Like, that's just, I think, a pervasive problem amongst us. Tension spans aren't what they should be. <laughs> so, I'm just going to quickly trace this daisies onto this surface. And these daisies are not meant to be perfect. They are not meant to be heavily detailed. They're just there. They're part of the background. Nothing elaborate or realistic. Simplicity is the name of the game for this. And you know I'm going to be using a gel pen for this. I like this kind of construction type mixed media because it's so versatile and you can customize it so many different ways. Um, go and grab those magazines. You know the stacks of magazines you see in the uh, thrift stores and whatnot or old-fashioned magazines and books or art books and whatnot. Go ahead and cut some images out of those. Use that for your mixed media. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You don't necessarily have to have the perfect piece of scrapbook paper you can find some beautiful images just in old magazines and old books you know those badly damaged old books you can just tear them apart use up all of those pretty illustrations that are in them and keep those for your mixed media art and if you find something you really like make a photocopy of it and then, then you have several copies kicking around. You don't have to give up the, the one original piece that you have. Okay, so I have daisies traced onto my surface. And then we're going to make these a little bit more opaque. And we're going to do that with a little bit of either warm white paint or a little bit of gesso. It, either one will work just fine. 
but they don't have to be perfect. I'm going to use a little bit of warm white for mine. It's my favorite go-to. I also go through a lot of white gesso. So again, this does not have to be perfect. I'm just going to quickly stroke in all of these petals. Make sure that you leave a little space between each petal uh, just to give them a little bit of definition. It'll make your life simpler in the end. And these do not have to be perfect. Don't overthink it, just fill them in. If you've got Posca pens, I love my Posca pens. Um, they are fantastic for this. If you don't feel like painting them, go ahead and use the Posca pens. Fill them in that way. There's a hundred different ways to do this. Super simple. I don't believe in do making things complex just for the sake of complexity. So you can do really cool things with very simple techniques. They don't have to be over the top. They don't have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And in general, I find that simplicity is usually the best choice. Go. These are easy peasy. Simple daisies. Nothing elaborate. Just fill in that center. Again, just with a little bit of warm white. Stems. They just need to be a little bit of warm white. They do not have to be perfect. Easy peasy. So all of the leaves, all of the petals, all of the stems are going to get a just a quick coat of warm white. Again, don't overthink it. Just fill in that shape with a loose coat of warm white. These flowers are going to look a little sketchy back there. They don't need to be perfect. In fact, it's better if they're not. Because, quite honestly, these flowers are just part of the background. They are not the feature. And they are not the focal point. And the focal point is our butterflies. And they're going to be, that's where all the fun is, is doing those butterflies. They're simple, but they're fun. So there is our center. So yes, if you have a close look, these daisies are not perfect. They're kind of sketchy looking. And they're not fully opaque. We're just putting that shape in. That's all it is. So don't overthink these. I'm trying to find the chat here. Where'd you go? Nancy Ficardi, you said that you use too much time? I don't think you spend nearly enough time on it. I think you should be here all the time. I love doing this type of thing. They're just, it, this is relaxing. These mixed media pieces are relaxing. They are not meant to be stressful in any way, shape, or form. Who needs more stress in life? Good gravy. Life has enough of that. The other fun thing about this is that you don't have to get rid of those graphite lines. Don't worry about them. 
they just end up becoming part of the finished piece in the end. It doesn't doesn't hurt anything to leave them there. We have lovely petals. How's the Facebook chat doing? It's not too bad when I can see it. <laughs> it keeps disappearing. Hi, Terry. She's at the eye doctor waiting for her eye appointment. Eye exam. <laughs> Terry Gasper. So the members did their class on Tuesday night. We painted lemons. We had such a, it was a great class. It was so much fun. We painted lemons with watercolor pencils. Who sells fluid acrylics? Sandy McTeer design.com. Go and check out Sandy's website. She stocks those. In Canada, it's a different story. It's very difficult to find, unfortunately. <laughs> Who's the main supplier? Well, it was Country Bear, but I oh, yeah. don't know who took over that distributorship. Hmm. So, I've got a coat of white down on all these daisies. Again, simple. Don't overthink it. We're just getting that color in. These are part of the background, not the focal point. So it's going to be really simple to paint these. We're going to use, again, our fluid acrylics for this. I'm going to grab, where is my, there it is, got my rigger. I'm going to use a little bit of that green gold which is that sort of l limey green, chartreuse type green. I'm going to just paint in the stems with that, just a simple line of it. The reason I put the white down is because these colors are transparent and we want these to pop a little bit. So I put a little bit of white down just to show off that color. Easy. And we're going to paint the leaves that color as well. You can thin these acrylics out with a little bit of water or with a little bit of fast dry glaze. If you find that it's not behaving the way you want it to. A little bit of water does not hurt these at all. So. And again, I'm not really treating these like perfectly painted daisies. I'm just getting a little color in there. So we have stems. And we're going to use a little bit of that diarylide yellow. You remember that in your face yellow? We're going to use that for the centers of these flowers. And again, I'm just putting that color in there, not looking for perfection. Just need a nice bright yellow center. Look at that, we've got daisies. So I'm gonna dry this real quick and then we're going to uh, shade these flowers just a little just to give them a little bit of oomph and I'm going to use a little of that cobalt teal that beautiful turquoise or Bahama blue color and we're going to shade the base of these petals with a float of that again neatness doesn't count for this my favorite expression Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. In this case in particular, because we don't want these to be perfect little daisies. 
So I get a little bit of that lovely blue at the center. So it's essentially just at the base of each petal where it joins the center of the flower. It's just a little float on each one. Again, I am not too concerned about whether or not these are perfect because they don't have to be. Well, apparently the automated ads is uh, getting annoying. Okay. Yeah. So I just turned them off. Okay. <laughs> the only ads you should be getting now are off to the right hand side. It should just be a little ad window. Ads are annoying. Unfortunately, they're necessary, but yeah. They are annoying. So. But on the upside <laughs> is that we have control over them, so to an extent. So, I have a little bit of a, of that cobalt teal hue in the center of our flowers and I'm going to get a little bit of ashfaltum because I need to put a shadow on our little centers here. I'm going to put a shadow at the base of that yellow just to give it a little more dimension. And a little divot in the middle of our Oxide Daisy, these would be. Little divot. And then I have a little bit of sap green. I just want to put a little shadow on these leaves. Just to give them a, just a little shape. So little shadow at the base of the leaf where it joins the stem. Doesn't have to be much. Just gives them a little more dimension. They don't look quite so flat. And a little shadow to separate some of these stems. That's all. Doesn't have to be much. There we go. These are so fun. So I'm going to dry all of this. We're going to add a little texture to the centers of the flowers, but nothing major. I'm going to grab my rigger and a little bit of warm white. We're just going to add a few little dip dots and just a few. I don't want a ton of them like so, just to give that center of the flower a little texture and a little bit of a highlight, but it doesn't have to be much. This just, all it does is give them a little interest in there. There we go. And then I'm going to dry this really well. I'm gonna set it aside to dry and then we're going to work on our butterfly. So this is a really pretty base for what we're going to do next. So I have the two butterflies uh, that are printed onto cardstock and I'm going to fold the wings at where they join the body so that I end up with a flat spot like that. So that is going to be how our butterfly sits and I'm going to do the same thing to the small one. So I'm going to grab a nice little round brush I think I'll use my quill. <laughs> and the kitty's name is Airy. Airy, <laughs> yes. But as much air is in her head. Airy. Airy. She's not the brightest. She's definitely entertaining. Yep. 
So I'm going to use a little of that diarylide yellow fluid acrylic and I'm going to add some yellow to those open areas on the wings. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just filling things in. A little bit of diarrhea yellow. Thank you for getting rid of the ads. <laughs> Hope that does not increase any costs for you. No, it actually, the ads make us money. Yeah. But. It's what pays for this channel. <laughs> it's what pays for the channel, really. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Mm. We, Renee and I had this discussion earlier. You have to set it up a certain way. And... It gives you options, and we chose the one that was sort of in the middle. Um, but obviously it was obviously pretty intrusive. <laughs> it was intrusive, so we just change it back. It's not that big a deal. Yep. So I've got, look at that, pretty yellow. So I'm going to hold these guys down so that I can dry them a little. And this is just cardstock. It Poss doesn't... Sorry. Don't need anything fancy for this. It's just cardstock. Posca pens? Posca pens. They are acrylic paint pens. I love these. And ah. guess who makes them? Decor. Uniball. Oh, Uniball. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me so happy because I use Uniball pens all the time, and I, I am a big fan of these. Um, I will say this. Not cheap. Worth every penny. And this is a basic set, 12 colors. They're fan freaking tastic I just love these Posca pens. I've been using them for a bunch of things lately. So I have a Deco Color Liquid Gold paint pen. I love these. This is the fine one, the extra fine. It's got that tiny little tip. All of these little bits out here, these little dots, I used my gold paint pen just to fill those in because I can and it just made this a little more sparkly we're not going for high realism here <laughs> we're going for fun golden monarch no technically this isn't a monarch technically it just looks like one kinda again not going for realism so I just used my little gold paint pen. Uh, these actually are a really good deal on you can, yeah, go ahead, Yoshida. Marvi Yoshida, Deco Color Gold Paint Pen. This is the extra fine. I use the, um, the chisel tip ones too for doing ornament edges and whatnot. But I really liked this these ones I actually got these ones by accident the first time and now I order them all the time because I like mm -hmm. them so, what is the purpose of those Posca pens uh, they can be used uh, in acrylic painting yeah they're just loaded with acrylic paint so and they they work like a marker they work like a marker so you can do all sorts of things you can draw into your paintings add borders fill in small details that say you're not comfortable using a brush so they have these wonderful tips, and they are fully acrylic, so I can go like that. Nice and opaque. Just works like a giant Sharpie, except it's paint. Cool. Yeah, and it's nicely pigmented. They're very nice. So if you're working on canvas, it doesn't matter what you're working on. They work just fine. I Posca didn't... pens. They are very popular. I didn't know you set it up. I thought it was YouTube doing it. YouTube was doing it, yes. Yeah. We had the option of setting it to our own likes, yeah. but we didn't know what that was. So <laughs> so we had to follow their instructions, which yeah. we did. Um, apparently the, the ads got a little burdensome, So, but we also have the ability to take a step down, which is what yeah. Renee did. Oh, I, I turned it, turned turned it off. Yeah, because there was a few little complaints about the ads at first, so I took okay. it off balanced and put it on okay. more conservative. Yeah. And even then, it's still too much. It was a little too much, so I just turned off the automation. Okay. So now we're back to the way we were. Yep. Perfect. 
There we go. So yeah, I'm just using that gold paint pen to add a few little details to the, the wings. This is just a fun way to customize things using these paint pens. There we go. Now I'm going to use my, oops, that's not it. This thing, the Denda pen. I had to read it again. The Identa pen and I have a less than stellar relationship. I can never remember what it's called. Much to the chagrin of the people at <coughs> Identa pen. <laughs> so I'm just adding a little bit of shading to my flutter by. It didn't wasn't quite fully black, so I'm going to use a little bit of that uh, quinacridone magenta, that brilliant red, and I'm going to pull a little heat into my wings with a little bit of that magenta. I like that brighter orangey red. in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I love is that these colors are transparent so I don't have to be so meticulous with it. How pretty is that? So a little bit. Oof. And a little bit on this one, this little guy here. We want some nice, bright, orangey red. And I'm a little obsessed with Galaxy Varnish these days. So I've got two brilliantly colored monarch butterflies. I'm going to dry them, hold them down so they don't go away. Yeah, you didn't want them flying away? <laughs> and then we're going to, I'm going to use some decoupage for this part. Now the decoupage dries a little harder which is why I decided to use this. So I'm going to put a fairly generous coat of decoupage onto the wings of this butterfly. Like so. I'm going to try very hard not to get it on the back so that it doesn't stick to the table because I did that the other day. And I ended up having to use my palette knife to get it off the table. Because, you know, special that way. What is Joe Sonia's magic mix? Uh, it's actually a flow medium, a retarder. It's a bunch of different mediums all in one. It's good stuff. Um, I don't use the magic mix myself. I use the fast dry glaze. Because I like what that does for me. It works best for the techniques that I use, but... Magic Mix is a medium that does almost everything. So I've got one coat of decoupage on the wings. I'm going to dry this real quick. It does dry nicely and quickly. Like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side of the wings. I'm going to put another coat on. We want to stabilize these wings and make them a little thicker, a little stiffer than just the paper. And I do the body as well. So the butterfly is going to do some weird and wonderful things when you're doing this. See how it curls? Because it's wet. And I'm going to push down on this and dry it. 
Then I'll do the other one. Uh, Don, Don Lavelle is asking, what media is best for image transfer? Okay. Um, I like matte medium. Mainly because I use it all the time and I like the sheen. It's very, it has no sheen to speak of. So that's one of my reasons for using it as much as I do. Um, but quite honestly, if you can't get the matte medium, this is by or none. One of the best is this decoupage matte. It works exceptionally well. It does have a little bit more sheen than the matte medium. Just a little, but it is excellent. So I can highly recommend either or. So just to make sure these are nice and dry. And then I'm going to close this up because we're going to use some varnish for the next step. Now that little bit of matte medium, or the little bit of decoupage, I should say, um, that essentially has stabilized this. So now it's a little stiffer. I'm going to curve the wings. Just going to give them a little curve. Now you can do this with a uh, stencil brush handle. I just want to curl them a little, like so. So that now when I bend this up, I get that nice little tip to the wings. I'm going to do the same thing to this little one. Now the reason that I curled them down is because the underside is white. I don't really want the underside showing as much. So I'm going to curve them down in a way like so. And so we have a flat spot where the body is and then the wings will curl up and out just a little. And that's going to give us that nice arched look. So our next step is this. I love this stuff. I'm absolutely obsessed with this stuff. This is Galaxy Glitter, Galaxy Varnish. So this one has the glitter added to it and it's not an over the top glitter. You have a lot of control with this. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm going to put a generous coat of this onto the wings like so and to do that onto the body as well oh crud neatness doesn't count for this part just get it on there and this is a varnish so it's going to give these wings a bit of a sheen which I really like about this, but I also like that it just adds a really nice bit of sparkle to our flutterbys. There we go. And then I'm going to dry that. So the texture that it creates doesn't really matter. It just becomes part of the butterfly. But I do love that it has this really great sparkle in it. But it doesn't bury everything. So I'm going to let these dry for a second. And while it's drying, I'm going to plug in my glue gun. Now, I'm using a glue gun for this for a couple of reasons. Um, one, <laughs> I don't have to hold the butterfly in place for too long, waiting for glue to dry. <laughs> so, 
use that. I got myself this handy dandy glue gun. Inexpensive one, comes in a nice little carry case, came with a whole whack of glue sticks, so that is the one I'm using. So this is drying pretty quickly. And I'm just going to, again, sort of reshape my wings a little bit. <laughs> is it considered mixed media if you do painting and watercoloring but add white acrylic highlights? Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. You're mixing media. So, <laughs> so yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> So I, I don't know if this is reading on camera or not, but do you see the glitter? I just love the sparkle that that DuraClear Galaxy Varnish gives us. It's just a really kind of subtle and pretty. I'll give it a kind of shows up on camera. Yeah, a little bit. It could stay there. <laughs> I like that I can force dry this a little bit. And I like that it gives the wings a nice bit of shine and a little sparkle. So when you're gluing these on, notice how I have when I initially folded these wings. So I've got that flat part. This is the part we're going to adhere first is that little flat spot on our butterfly. No, 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 don't do that. There we go. There we are. I'm going to make sure that these wings curve. There we are. So before you glue anything down, you have to decide where you're putting things and which angle you're going to put them. Um, I'm kind of a fan of that little one going that way. And I'm a fan of this one going that way. And it just sort of, you know, leads the eye up, up and up. Or you can change you could do it one this way, change the angle of the butterfly slightly that way, and again, it leads up. So you can arrange this any way you like, quite honestly. So I'm thinking I might actually do it this way. I kind of like the idea of this little butterfly sitting in amongst the daisies. What do you think? You can rearrange these any way you like. So I want to curve my wings a bit more. I'm trying to avoid actually folding the wing. I want a, it curved. Just mm. gives this a softer look. Oh, what's for dinner? Tonight, uh -huh. we are having blackened chicken. Blackened chicken. So I've got... My large butterfly, a little bit of glue. I'm using hot glue. And I'm going to position my butterfly like so. And I'm just going to hold it long enough for the glue to set. Just like that. Ooh, yep, I'm liking that one. And I'm going to do the same thing with this little guy. And you'll notice that I'm folding the wings up. I don't want the wings to actually adhere to the surface, but I do want the body to. So I'm folding those wings up. And then on this one, I want a little dab of glue right there. 
and just a little touch to hold that wing tip down. So just hold it in place until that glue sets. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So just a little dab. You don't need a lot. Just enough to hold that wing in place. And you can do the same thing to this little guy, but I honestly don't think this one is necessary. There we go. So we have really delicate looking butterflies. And now I get to play with the glue pen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I get really excited about this for some unknown reason. So this is that Tombow glue pen. And this actually just, I got so excited about this. Uh, I'm going to literally just create a few lines, details, following that stencil pattern a little bit. Not a ton. And then while it's still wet, this does dry fairly quickly, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of glamour dust where I put it. Like okay. so. Apparently they need a list. A list? A list. Oh, what kind of Of list? Tracy's must-haves. Oh, my must-haves? Yeah. So, check that out. I don't know if it, I don't know if the camera shows it or not, but there's just this little detail. Do you see that? Where that glue pin? I just love this. Run, run. <laughs> What's that about? So wherever I put that pen, I got the, the pattern. I got glue. So I can literally add details with that <laughs> pen. Sign your name and sprinkle it full of glitter. Add details, fun little sketchy things to it. <laughs> it's going to be a long list. Um, my favorites, tend to, I tend to be a little simplistic. I like certain stamps. I... I'm in love with this pen. This thing is freaking awesome. Um, I can see this one causing, causing a lot of things. A lot of glitter. Lots of glitter. Um, lots of gold leaf. Hello. Works with gold leaf? Yeah. I tried it with a gl glitter flake, or the flakes the other day. And it yeah? Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, there's a few things. But you have to put it down while it's still wet. That's the only downside. Uh, but it works so easily. So if you need to adhere small things, if you want little bits of paper, design elements, what have you added to things, this thing would be just the bee's knees. I'm loving this pen. And I'm loving that it, it look at that glitter. It's so cool. Hey, don't blow it. <laughs> just stop it. <laughs> I'll blow it all over at you. So what do you think, guys? Is that fun? Now, you can add more to this if you choose to. Um, one thing that I did want to do, I want to grab some black paint. We put that aged edge on there. <laughs> Cold leaf with a goo pen. Yes, ma'am. Um, we did put the aged edge on with the stamp pad, but then I did a bunch of stuff and I kind of made it all go away. So I'm going to just take a little bit of lamp black. I want to put a simple little chipped look all the way around. Again, neatness doesn't count for this. What is the name of the glue pen? It's, this is the Mono Glue Pen from Tombow. Available at tracymoreau.net. Yeah, I do have some on the website. Just saying. But they've been... <laughs> um, they've. I know they've been out for a little while, like a few months, but... They've been so popular that I haven't been able to get any until just recently. So, and I was only able to get a few. So I'm a happy camper. I got my glue pens. It's funny. I get excited about certain things. Glue pens among them. Oh my. What? What? There was no asphalt amused in this project. Yes, there was. Where? I used asphaltum for the stencil, and I used asphaltum around the outside edge. Oh. 
They're much. calling you out on it. They're saying you didn't use Eshvaltum. I did use Eshvaltum. It's in the stencil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have we met? <laughs> <laughs> what are you? I'm new? just going by <laughs> what your audience is saying. Of course there's Eshvaltum in it. <laughs> there was no Eshvaltum in this project? Yes, there was, apparently. I think I would probably shock people if I ever did something that didn't have asphaltum in it. That's why they're saying it. Well, so I'm pretty sure you didn't mention anything about asphaltum. Yep, I did when I was stenciling. So I'm just going to quickly finish the edge with a little bit more paint. <laughs> I love this distressed look. And I'm going to dry this. Bye, Lucy. And have then we only one. have one thing left to do, and that is to... I have to spatter it. I have to put some spatter on. And we're going to use my two uniball pens. We're going to use my opaque white. And we're going to use my black gel. That's not my black gel. That is. So... I'm going to use my black gel pen. We're going to define those daisies a little bit. Just to make them stand out a little bit more. I use that black gel for a squiggly line around my flowers. I, again, I cannot impress on you enough of how unimportant neatness is for this piece. I love doing this kind of thing. I love mixed media. And I kept thinking, hmm, I wonder if I could glue something, to, something else to this. Maybe a piece of metal or a little heart or I, there's so many things you could do to this. A small key. Um, I don't think that anything would be out of line. You could do so much to this. So I'm just going to lightly sketch around my petals. And again, I am not worried about it being neat and tidy. It doesn't have to be. I'm just quickly defining a few elements in here. Fast and dirty, nothing perfect. Perfection is overrated. There we go. So that little sketchy line, all it does is just define these petals, these leaves, implies a few little details, but nothing, nothing perfect. I think perfection is boring. So there we go. I've got one last, one last little thing to do, a couple of little things. I'm going to use my white gel pen to add a little highlight along the edges of that black that we put in there. Again, not perfect. We're not looking for perfection. And we're going to do a little bit of spatter. I like a little bit of black on this. And there's nothing to stop you from grabbing your stamps and coming back in and adding things if you choose to. Um, you could use white ink and add a few more details if you wanted to. You could add a little bit of metallic paint if you wanted to. There is nothing to stop you from embellishing further on this. So if you wanted to do more, you absolutely could do more. Um, if you wanted to include a different stencil or another design or another color, you can certainly add that at any time. You could sit and look at this for two hours tonight and then decide tomorrow afternoon that it was missing something and you can add to, the, to it then. Not going to make a big difference. Kiss kissing.
Oh. Your name on it. Oh. Amazon delivery. <laughs> Of course my name's on it. It's squishy. Oh, that's your one of your birthday presents. So, I've got a little bit of white around there. Just because I like that little pop of, of light on this. And I'm going to grab my fugly brush. I'm going to rinse that out. And I'm going to thin out a little bit of lamp black. And I'm going to spatter. Oh, I like that. A little bit of black in a few places. And then I'm going to dry it. And I would take this out to the garage and I would hit it with a couple of light coats of matte spray just to seal everything in. Um, if you're using a heat gun, Watch what the little glue dots that you put down. But there we go. There is mixed media monarchs. Uh. Is it better to use matte spray or varnish before or after applying the butterflies? Uh, ideally, I would do it before. Ideally. But in this case, I can take it out. The butterflies are already varnished, so I can take it out to the garage and spritz them and it will be fine. Now to finish this, I would just, uh, you know, piece of lace or cording or even just a small piece of ribbon at the top maybe hang a charm or something from it maybe a little butterfly and then i would keep that <laughs> in my studio for inspiration <laughs> would look great in a journal page there you <laughs> go <laughs> it's a fun one i enjoy doing these doing these little butterflies the dimension is really pretty that little extra bit of dimension is really pretty And who doesn't love butterflies? Honestly. How can you not love butterflies? So, I uh, think it turned out quite nice. I'm pleased with it. <laughs> so, Renee is going to set up the wheel. I'm trying to. Won't let me. <laughs> so, the wheel. In order to get your name on the wheel, all you have to do is hit the, the follow button on Facebook. Share it. Like it hit all the buttons and if you're on YouTube hit the subscribe button and uh, definitely give us a like we'd appreciate that and uh, by all means share 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 we put your names onto the wheel every week and we always have some really fun giveaways this there week's we giveaway is from Tombow USA I absolutely love Tombow products I use them all the time um, I am a particular fan of the uh, mechanical pencils I love designing with them and with the drawing pens oh, i love my tombow drawing pens so if uh, you have hit all those buttons then your name is on that wheel somewhere and it looks like it's pretty loaded today yep 207 nice so out of the 207 three of you are going to have a great little giveaway and if your name is called, make sure that you pop over to the webs our website at tracymoreau.net. Click on the contact button and send us an email with your shipping information so that we can get your goodies out to you as soon as possible. Anything that is unclaimed after two weeks goes back in the bin. <laughs> Lee Hilton. Awesome. Is it Leah or Lee? Leah Hilton. And Vicky. <laughs> Boop. Huda. Number two. Number two. Linda Johnson. Right on.
And last one. Last one goes to the gang on Facebook. Does Mr. <laughs> Edward Hensley? Awesome, Mr. Edward. Edward hasn't won in quite some time. Edward's part of my membership group, so along with a bunch of them. Boom. Bada boom. Well, thanks so much, guys. If you get a chance to um, pop over to the website, we've added a bunch of new printables to the uh, free printable download section on the website. So there's a couple new ones on there. And um, I have a couple of new patterns that went up uh, very recently. So go and have a look at those. I'd appreciate it. If you are not part of my membership group, please consider joining us. We have so much fun and we do so many creative things. Um, aside from what we do here on the, on the weekly lives, we do an awful lot with the membership group in a variety of media, whether it's colored pencil, watercolored pencil, acrylics, um, you name it. We've played in it and we're going to continue. We've got some great projects for them this month. So consider that. If it's a little too rich for your blood doing the, the monthly membership, you can always join the um, Creating with Tracy videos, which gives you access to the members videos every month, as well as all of the previous classes. So that might be something you might like to consider. Um, and as always, you can join us here every Saturday from at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time on either my YouTube channel or on Tracy Morrow Live on Facebook. We dual stream to both and uh, we always have something fun to create. Come and join us next Saturday. We're doing a Thanksgiving piece. Um, it, I promise you it's the last fall piece I'm going to do for, for a little while. We're doing a fall piece called Give Thanks and it is uh, it will be up tomorrow afternoon for download. Um, it's pumpkins and squash on a fun background. I think you'll enjoy it. It was fun to do. So join us next Saturday. Same time, same bat channel right here. <laughs> I know you just love the bat channel thing. Same bat uh, time, same bat channel. <laughs> so you can join us here every Saturday. Don't forget to hit the follow button on uh, Tracy Morrow Live Facebook page. And you'll get notified whenever we go live. So, everybody, have a great weekend uh, if you're Canadian. Enjoy the uh, holiday, the long weekend. And we will see you next Saturday. Oh, it's a holiday weekend? It is, yep. And in the meantime, mwah, we love you. Please stay safe. Pet your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can figure out the mute button this time. Really? Yeah, well, last time it didn't work. <laughs>